Hi, welcome back from spring break. Your homework today is to do what we're doing in class, which is to complete the solving four square worksheet, which is going to be back from the class today. Here's what it looks like. We're going to have four equations. The equations are going to be inside the box for you. For each of those equations, you need to find the roots in four different ways. This is just review. It's nothing new today. Here's a little review of how you find roots by graphing. Here's a review of how you find the roots by factoring. Looks like this is getting cut off a little bit. Okay. Um, here's a review of how you find the roots by completing the square. Let me pause for a second. All right, now you should be able to see the last step there. And this is a review of how you find the roots by the quadratic formula. Here's the first one. I will do this one with you. All right. We've got our equation here in the middle, right here, x squared minus 8x plus 12. First thing we need to do is solve by graphing. We need to use negative b over 2a to find the axis of symmetry. Okay? So negative b over 2a is going to be 8 over 2 times 1 which is 4, and I'm going to plug that right in there. So my axis of symmetry is going to be right here. What else do I know? I know this is going to be opening up because my A is 1. I know it's not going to be super steep or super shallow. What's my y-intercept going to be? Y-intercept is 12 right here. So now we need to do a little calculations. Uh, I'm going to do my calculations over here and then erase them because there's just not enough room. Okay, if I plug 4 in, I get 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 12. That's the same thing as 16 minus 32 plus 12. Ooh, that's hard. 16 plus 12 is 28 minus 32, negative 4. Same thing with, well, what numbers do I plug in here? I've got to put in 3 and 2, 5 and 6. Let's do 3 first. I end up with 3 squared minus 8 times 3 plus 12. That's 9 minus 24 plus 12. How can you simplify this? I'm going to do 9 plus 12 is 21 minus 24 is negative 3. Let's try plugging in, well, let's just take and make sure that we did that part right by plugging in the opposite side. Let's plug in 5. So we should end up with 25 minus 40 plus 12. 25 plus 12 is 37 minus 40, negative 3. Yes. So we know we're on the right track. Let's try plugging in the easy one first. Let's plug in 2. 2 times 2, we get 4 minus 16 plus 12. How can we simplify that? Well, let's see. 4 plus 12 is 16 minus 16. Oops. That's 0. That makes it easy. Last one, let's just plug in 6 and make sure that that works out right as well. What should it be? Well, we know it's symmetric, so it should be 0. Let's try. 36 minus 48 plus 12. 36 plus 12 is 48 minus 48 is 0. Okay. So now we're going to plot our points. So we go to 4, negative 4. 3, negative 3, 2, 0, 5, negative 3, 6, 0. Make a nice graph. Now stop. Remember the important part is what are the roots? 
roots are the places where the grass crosses the x-axis. You can find it right here and right here. Those roots are 2 and 6. Okay, let's do it by factoring. Start with the equation. x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. We've got to factor it. Our first step is to set it equal to 0. Now we factor it. First we use the box. We've got our x squared. We've got our 12. We need to figure out how to split this term. Use the x. We end up with 12x squared, negative 8x. What two numbers? Negative 6x, negative 2x. Put that in here. Find the greatest common factor. Each column in each row, you end up with x minus 2 times x minus 6 equals 0. Can you see that we're on the right track? We're going to end up with the same thing. So we say x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. If we add 2 to both sides, x minus 6 equals 0, so 0. Add 6 to both sides, x equals 6. Okay? There's our answer from graphing. Here's the answer from factoring. They match. If they match, you know you're on the right side, on the right on the right um, step. Let's change that into square, not square. Let's find the roots by completing the square. Let's start with x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Okay, that means that we're looking for the places where that graph is equal to 0. First step, move the constant over to the right. x squared minus 8x equals negative 12. Now, second step, we need to find C. Here's the x squared. Split those x's in half. How many dots? 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides. Okay, we've just turned the left side into a perfect square. Now we can factor this side. We know it's a perfect square trinomial. So we can say that this is equal to x plus, let's just get the square root of this, x plus 4 square combine these is 4. Take the square root of both sides now. We're looking for inverses here, so we're taking the square root. You end up with x plus 4 equals plus 4 minus 2. Square root of 4 is 2. So... We're going to add 4 to both sides. We actually subtract 4 from both sides. So x equals negative 4. Oh, you know what? Made a mistake here. I can check it. This should have been a negative because this was a negative. So we've got negative 4. Now we add 4 to both sides. You end up with 4 plus or minus 2. We split that. We've got 4 plus 2 equals 6, 4 minus 2 equals 2. There's our roots. Do they match? Yes. Good. Let's find it by quadratic formula. x equals negative b. What's negative b? 8. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. We've got 64. Minus 4 times a. What's a? Just 1 times c, which is 12, all over 2 times 1. All right, let's simplify. This is equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 48, all over 2. We're going to run out of room, as usual. All right, let's simplify. What's 64 minus 48? can do it over here. 64 minus 48. That's 16. Okay, I'm just going to erase because I'm running out of room. You end up with 16 right here. So you end up with 8 plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4 over 2. Sorry, I better move this out of the way. Okay, we can reduce that. 
That's the same thing as 4 plus or minus 2. We're going to do some this, this, and this. Split that in 2. We have 4 plus 2 equals 6. 4 minus 2 equals 2. Same answer. All right. Um, let me get this answer written out small. I'm going to, this is the second equation. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to just write in the answers here. And then you can try it on your own and then compare your answers to mine. All right, take a look at the completed answers here. Notice that your roots are always negative 1 and negative 5. If you tried to do it, just check to see if you got the answers right and if you didn't, see where you made the mistake. And now we're going to move on to the next one. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video. Try to complete, try and find the factors in four different ways of this root right here. All right, notice that in this case there's only one root. The parabola just touches the x-axis in one place, which makes factoring it pretty easy. I could have used the x-box or the box and then the x, but notice I just noticed this was a perfect square trinomial and used the pattern. Here it is by completing the square. Notice that when you complete the square, you really can't do it if there's an a other than 1. So the first step is always to divide by that a. And in this case, it worked out really well because 3 goes into all of those four digits. Okay. Here, notice that our discriminant turned out to be 0, which is why we ended up with just one root. All right, last one. Go ahead and pause the video right here. I'll put my work up and then you can compare it. All right, here's our answers. You can see that really from the graph, there's not going to be any real roots here at all. When we try and factor, it becomes prime. When you factor and it's prime, either that means there's no real roots or there are roots, but they're irrational. When you complete the square here, we get the square root of a negative number. Can't have that, no real roots. Same thing with a quadratic form. All right, if you can do all that, you've got your homework done. Bye-bye.